Welcome back to PSC's Tech Vibe. First of all, let me remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel by pressing the red button in the lower right corner of this screen. Today, I'm going to talk with you about the search box web part, which can be used to collect the free text to search from an end user. You can use this web part in the search result page to allow users to refine their search queries and you can connect it to the search results web part to provide a better experience in the search results page. From a configuration point of view, it is highly customizable. For example, you can configure how you will present the placeholder for the search text, how you can eventually transform the search text. You can define the target search page which can be an external page that you can open in a new tab or in the current window. You can configure the query suggestions, as well as, as I told you, the web part connections to the search result page. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to play with this web part in action. First of all, in order to use the PMP modern search web parts, you need to go to the GitHub repo where the source code is available. And from there, if you click on releases, you can see the latest release and you can download the SPPKG file of the latest release so that you can upload it into the app catalog of your target tenant and you can start playing with it. Once you've done that, if you want to focus on the search box web part, here you can find the official documentation about that web part. And now let's move to my demo and see how you can configure the search box web part. So let's say, for example, that you want to search for this keyword, which is for sure available in one of the newspapers, uh, Italian newspapers that I have. And here we have uh, a bunch of results. Then let's focus on the search box web part. Edit the page, and here you can see that I have the web part. And if I click on the pencil to edit the configuration, we can first of all see that this will be the text placeholder. So if I will get rid of any text, I will see the placeholder that I specified right here. Then you can eventually turn on this flag in order to target the search query to another page, for example. So here we can write the search text and we can click on the search button and the user will be brought to a specific page URL, which can be opened in the current tab or in a new tab, as you can see, and which can have a URL fragment or a query string parameter to specify the query text, the free query text, as well as you can eventually use this query input transformation template to transform the input query before going to the other, to the target page. In this scenario, I want to bind my search box to the search results, so I will not uh, target another page, but I will stay in this page and I will control the output uh, of the search result for part. So, in the second stage of the configuration, we can eventually enable query suggestions uh, and we can rely on uh, uh, query suggestion providers. By default, uh, we have just the SharePoint static search suggestions, which can be configured at SharePoint level and within 24 hours will give you all of the suggestions that you defined. But you can also eventually configure custom suggestions using the extensibility model that I will show you uh, shortly and briefly at the end of this demo. Plus, you can configure the number of suggestions that you want to get for the users while they are writing their uh, free text to search. Clicking by ne on Next, you will go to the third stage of the configuration where well, you can configure to have dynamic data source for the search box, meaning that eventually if there will be a data source coming from an external provider, you can automatically pre-populate the search text in the uh, search box, as like as I'm doing right here, where I search for this keyword, and the keyword was pre-populated uh, in the text box of the search box. In order to do that, you need to enable this flag, you need to select the uh, data source for your web part, in my scenario I selected to use the page environment, to use the query string of the page, to get the query parameters, and to get the query parameters with name Q, which, as you can see, is here in the query string. Once you've done that, whenever you will land to this page, starting from the search box at the top of the SharePoint site, and once you have configured this page as the search result page, as I will instruct you how to do in one of the upcoming videos, you will be able to pre-fill, pre-populate 
the text box of the search box with the query string uh, on, uh, in the uh, with the query text in the query string. Then, in the fourth stage of the configuration, you can eventually configure the extensibility model and specifically you can configure custom suggestions coming from an external library built with SharePoint Framework if you want to have this kind of custom behavior. Last but not least, uh, for this web part as well as for all of the search web parts in the PMP Modern Search family, you can click on Edit Properties and you can see the XML configuration of the web part so that you can export or import this uh, configuration and reuse it uh, on a target environment. So, for example, you can configure your environment in the development uh, environment and then you can export the settings and use them in the uh, customer environment or in the production environment of your customer. And that's it. Once you've done that, you republish the page and you are done. Your page will get the query text from the query string and will be associated with the uh, search results web part and will provide you the output. But now the focus was just on the search box. In the upcoming episodes, we will focus on all of the other web parts and how to create a complete search result page. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.